Thank you, Joseph. Call the regular meeting of the Pennington County Commission to order. Just point out for our guests that there's agendas in the back of the room. Uh, we also have speaker request forms back there. If you wish to speak on any particular item, you may fill out one of those forms and turn it into Holly on your right. Um, I'll ask uh, Commissioner Hancock if she would lead us in a moment of silent reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Adcock. Review and approve agenda. Move. Second. I've got a motion and a second to uh, approve the agenda. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner, or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Hawley, <laughs> we have a request to remove item number 18 from the agenda from the applicant, please. Number 18, so this is the uh, Walder R. Miller um, request. I will point out if there's anyone in the audience that's here in regard to that uh, item, uh, when we get to it, I will still allow you to uh, present your testimony today. Is there is there a, a motion to approve the agenda and delete item 18? So moved. We've got a motion. Second. Is there a second? Any public comment? Any comment by the commission? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Ali, consent agenda. All right. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a con consent agenda to act on non controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of December 7th, 2021. To acknowledge the change of the final 2021 unorganized road fund and mill levy for taxes payable in 2022 to be 1.069 as submitted by the auditor. Number seven is to accept the recommendation for the appointments of Patty Bruner, Matthew Auden, Dallas Voss, Mark DeSanto, Heather Shambliss, Lloyd LaCroix, and John James to the 2022 Extension Advisory Board. Number eight is to approve the revised 2022 Board of Commissioner meeting dates. Number nine is to recognize and thank the volunteers for the month of November 2021. Number 10 is to declare capital asset number 97073, which is a 2006 Jeep Liberty, as surplus to turn the vehicle over to the insurance company for an insurance, insurance settlement as submitted by planning and zoning. And finally, number 11 is to authorize the joint powers agreement between the South Dakota Office of the Attorney General, Division of Criminal Investigations, Pennington County, the Pennington County Sheriff's Office, and the City of Rapid City for the computer forensics examiner's examiner position as submitted by the Sheriff's Office. Are there any members of the public wishing to remove any of these items from the consent calendar so that they may be discussed? Seeing none, uh, are there any commissioners that wish to have any items removed? And I would ask to remove number eight. Chair. Uh, Commissioner LaCroix. I'd request number seven, please. Seven and eight have been requested to be removed. Uh, any others? If not, I'd take a motion to approve the consent calendar with items five, six, nine, ten, and eleven. So moved. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. Item seven, Commissioner LaCroix. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The reason why I asked this one to be removed is because I think we've got a new applicant that we haven't had before, isn't it, John? And <clears throat> I just wanted to express that we did an interview with him last week, and he was. this is the first time we've actually had one for quite a while to the 4-H, and he did exceptionally well. And uh, I remember during the inter interview process, I 
mentioned to him about going to the youth city council that night and that night he did show up so he's got great interest in in serving our community and this is a, actually an add-on for the the 4-h board so. thank you i just wanted to give an update of it's somebody new that that we probably haven't seen for a while but uh, i think he was a good applicant super thank you uh is there a motion to uh approve item seven so moved we got a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Item number eight is the uh, we have a couple of suggested changes for our commission schedule. Uh, <coughs> we have a uh, regular meeting that's scheduled on June 7. Uh, that is primary election day. Uh, I would ask that we consider doing that on Friday. Uh, on June 10th, uh, as for reasons my regular work calls me to hear on, on the 8th and 9th. So if you'd be agreeable to June 10th, I'd appreciate it. Also, uh, we have scheduled uh, budget hearing dates in June, and um, uh, that also is a conflict for the 22nd for me, so I'm asking if we would consider doing the budget hearings on the 23rd and 24th instead of the 22nd and 23rd. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Ross, I'll make that motion to approve your recommendations. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Need a motion to go into executive session for contractual and pending litigation. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to go into the executive session. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskin. Move to come out of executive session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item 13. Mary. Okay. We have a business that is wanting to transfer a liquor license on sale with Sunday sales from um, Sweetgrass Bed and Breakfast under MRH Services to Chef Rack's Bar and Grill under Grade 8 Enterprises. So I just need a motion to approve the transfer. Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a uh, Second to approve. Is there any public comment relative to uh, the transfer of this alcoholic beverage license? Seeing none, back to the commission. All those in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item 14, Chair Felton. Good morning, Kevin Tone, Pinty County Sheriff. Um, we've been working with the auditor's office to clean up the motion that's before you today, and it's the language they suggested. We had some unanticipated consequences in terms of people moving internally the way the motion was made and uh, was penalizing those that were already employees and not being able to receive the bonus. That if you're going from one position to be a correctional officer, we felt you should be eligible. And so that's a language suggested by the auditor's office to clean up the motion if you so desire. Second. Got a motion and a second. A motion is to amend the hiring and retention policy approved at the August 3rd, 2021 commission meeting to include new hires, rehires, employee transfers, reclassifications, and promotions, and distribute the hiring bonus to correctional officers hired, rehired, transferred, reclassified, and or promoted since August 3rd, 2021. Is there any public comment in regard to this? Back to the commission. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Item 15, John Morrill. <coughs> Morning, Commissioners. John Morrill, Pennington County Human Resources. Um, the item I have before you today is the creation of a new position within the highway department. Um, this is to allow us to move forward Bless you. towards 
bless you, combining uh, the engineering department with the traffic departments within the highway office. Um, so again, the, the motion, if approved, would be move to approve the addition of the traffic operation engineer technician position in the highway department at a DBM rating of B23 with an effective hourly rate of $20.65 an hour, effective January 1st, and to authorize human resources to update the position listing, which is on file in the human resource office. Move for motion. approval. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Further discussion? Any public comment on this? Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carried. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, John. Items from the Highway Department. Joe Miller. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Joe Miller, Pennington County Highway Superintendent. Um, first item in front of you here is uh, uh, some certificates as far as our safety project goes with the Nemo Road curve. Uh, this curve is actually on the Meade County, uh, Pennington County line, um, kind of where our bridge collapsed last year. This project's been in the works for probably five or six years. Um, current, prior to this, it was uh, stricken by uh, right-of-way negotiations with the landowner. Um, we did actually secure the right-of-way that was needed for this project, both in Pennington County and the Mead County portion. Um, so that's what's in front of you here today is uh, the certificate stating that we've done that um, and that we've notified all utilities that this project will be happening in 2022. Um, the cost of this project uh, to the county is actually a 10% match. So to, to Mead County and Pennington County, it's a total of 10%. So we're actually... Uh, 5% of that 10% match. Um, the project is estimated, of, I just talked to Dustin Witt, the project manager for this one is $3.14 million for the Norris Road, Norris Peak Bogus Gym and then Nemo Road Curve. Um, so our current portion of this approximate is $160,000. So um, with that, I'll stand for any questions. Move approval. Second. I got a motion by Commissioner Hadcock and a second by Commissioner Zalaster. Commissioner Lasseter. Uh, any public comment? Back to the commission. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Item B. Item B is uh, essentially the same thing here for our Sherman Street Bridge that was been has been designed. We plan to apply for big funds for this project in 2022. Two, um, for construction in 2022 is the hope um, if we're successful on that. If we're not successful, we'll have to uh, kind of re, re, re-look at things and, and possibly move that to the following year. Um, just some things to point out here with our, with our big funds since we're talking about that. Um, currently, I'll pull up the spreadsheet here. Uh, we're up through November. Uh, we've collected one3 $1,338,798 million or $90 for our wheel tax. So we still have, have December to go through. Um, this is our first year collecting the wheel tax, but second year being able to apply for the big funds. Last year for our, uh, the bridge improvement grants, we were successful on one bridge. Um, we're applying for several more this year, Thunderhead Falls, Sherman Street, um, and then we're applying for four rehabilitation projects as well that you'll see in the, the next item here. Um, you know, it seems like we're, we're falling further and further behind. We had two bridges that were rated on Highway 1416, and I have a feeling that that's just going to continue coming. Um, so it might be, you know, for the 2023 budget cycle, it might be time to look at maybe upping that wheel tax when we, when we do come to that. Um, for 2022, we have approximately three and a half million dollars budgeted to go towards bridge improvements or reconstruction. So that's engineering, that's uh, the construction cost, that's all in three and a half million dollars. Um, of that, uh, the possible bridge improvement grant monies is $2.15 million. Um, so there's that possibility that we collect that, um, but there's also that possibility that we don't get those grants and we have to go through other avenues to try and get those bridges reconstructed. So. With that, I'll stand for any questions. Questions for Joe? Any public comment? Is there a motion? Move to approve. We got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.
Next one, uh, right away and utility certificates. This is for the bridge rehabilitation projects that we're doing on 161st Avenue, uh, neck yoke. And oh, I forgot what the other one was off the top of my head. It should be in your motion there. Um, this is, we're applying for the big funds for uh, preservation grants. Um, last year, there was, I believe, 13 projects that were awarded these. Um, so we've hopefully got a pretty good opportunity here to, to collect some of that uh, $3.5 million that we're putting uh, in our budget for bridge reconstruction. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Questions for Joe? Motion to approve. <coughs> got a motion and a second. Any public comment? Back to the commission. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Item D. Item D. The last one here is just our simply our application uh, to apply for all the, the bridges that we're applying to for bridge improvement grant funding. Motion to we approve. Do. Second. I've got a motion and a second to approve. Public comment. Back to the commission. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Okay. Can we stay up here? You want the applicant first? Um, well, let's see. Item 17. Do you want to stay up? I can. Yep. Um, I, Sean's not here. He's at uh, chainsaw training uh, this morning. So, um, kind of the nuts and bolts of it. All these approaches are, are necessary, um, and our office is not opposed to these. So. And I, and I think the only suggestion the highway had is to, uh, relative to bringing that one culvert Correct. up to a, a bigger size. Correct. And then uh, making sure that that roadway was 20 feet. Minimum. That is correct, yes. Motion okay. to approve. Second. Thank you. I've got a motion and a second to approve. Any public comment on this? Back to the commission. All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Chairman. Just a minute for a personal privilege. Um, Joe, can you come up for just a second um, and tell us about the fundraiser before you leave for Fane and his family? Um, so tomorrow, I guess, uh, <coughs> Sean and myself have uh, purchased the food and everything. We're, we're doing a lunch for our, all of our crew from 12 to 2. So uh, we've asked for donations for our, our foreman that passed away and may or june out in new underwood um just to to go to his family so thank you i appreciate that chairman thank you uh, item 18 has been removed from the agenda but is there anybody here that came for that item that would like to speak seeing none uh item 19 items from the public is there any measures that, uh, or any items that the public would like to bring forward before the uh, commission at this time? Items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none, we will uh, move to item 20. Uh, I need a motion to go into the uh, Board of Adjustment. Mr. Chair, we're way too early. Oh, I see, uh, 40 minutes too early. Okay, so we will uh, skip past the Board of Adjustment at this point in time. And um, you, executive session. You could go handle some executive sessions now if you would like. Move to go in an executive session. Second. Got a motion and a second for executive session. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Make a motion for going to the Board of Adjustment. Got to come out of executive session first. Oh, take a motion. Move to come, to come out, out of executive, executive session. session. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I need a motion to go into the Board of Adjustment. So moved. Got a motion and a second. 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 Uh, to go into Board of Adjustment. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, uh, Cody Sack, Environmental Planner. Agenda item A is variance VA 21-37. It's to reduce the front yard setback from 25 feet to zero feet uh, for an existing barn on the subject property. The applicant is Michael and Angela Holmberg. 
the agent is Renner Associates. Uh, staff is recommending uh, to continue variance via 21-37 to the January 18th, 2022 Board of Adjustment meeting uh, to see if the applicant attains an exception from the city of Rapid City for the width of right of way. So moved. This is, okay, we've got a motion to continue uh, by Commissioner LaCroix. Is there a second? A second. Second by Commissioner Ross Connect. Uh, is there any public comment uh, relative to continuing this item? Seeing none, back to the commission. Uh, any further discussion on this continuance? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item B. Uh, item B is variance VA 21 38. It is to reduce the side yard setback from 25 feet to eight feet for a carport on the subject property. The applicant and landowner is Scott Highland. The location of the property is 8728 Sheridan Lake Road. It is owned rural residential district, accesses off Sheridan Lake Road, and there is no special flood hazard area on the property. Uh, when approving variances, we take a two-prong approach. Uh, for prong number one, whether granting a variance from is counter to public interest. I have it on the board, I'll read the answers. Uh, number one, no. The request does not appear to be a threat or nuisance to the neighborhood. Uh, number two, the subject property surrounded by suburban residential districts. Eight foot, set, eight foot side yard setbacks are common throughout the neighborhood. The requested use conforms to the neighborhood. Uh, number three, no, the zoning ordinance requires a 25 foot setback from all property lines in rural residential district. Uh, number four, no, the comprehensive plan identifies the future land uses range at which also requires a 25 foot setback from all property lines. And number five, uh, no, the proposed structure does not appear to harm public safety, health, or the general welfare of the community. And for prong number two, whether a special condition exists to grant a variance. Uh, number one, yes, the building envelope for the subject property is limited by multiple legal non-conforming structures and uses owned by other entities. To include a well house and volunteer fire department garage, neither of which uh, meet the required 25 foot setback for a rural residential district or the eight foot required setback for suburban residential district. Uh, 1A, yes, rezoning the property of the suburban residential district would require these structures obtain separate setback variances and conditional use permits. Meeting these requirements would cause an unnecessary hardship to the property owner because they are not in harmony and are legal non conforming. A B grant, yes, granting this variance would observe the ordinance spirit and to do substantial justice. Uh, this was right around for inter-department review. Uh, County Highway came back. The Highway Department is not in favor of variances, but in this application, the Highway Department is not opposed as long as the front yard setback requirements are met. Dimensions of the structure should be noted as well as the distances from both the front and side property lines. Uh, staff included this as a condition of approval. Um, the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance, Section 207E, that the minimum setback requirement is 25 feet um, from the front side and rear setbacks for all structures. There is a well house on the property that is owned by the Bluebird Water Association and garage owned by Whispering Pines Volunteer Fire Department. There are also two unpermitted carports on the subject property. The applicant will need to obtain an approved building permit uh, from the Planning Department and pay associated <laughs> penalty fees. Uh, on November 24th, 2021, the applicant Scott Highland requested this setback variance to place a carport no less than eight feet from the side property line in rural residential district. Uh, and staff conducted a site visit on December 9th. Uh, photos are included in your packet. Uh, staff is recommending approval. As there are special conditions that exist on the property that would excuse the literal enforcement of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance, uh, Section 207. If the Board of Adjustment agrees and approves the request, staff recommends three conditions. Move approval based on staff recommendations. Second. With conditions. We got a motion and a second. Uh, approved on staff recommendations. Um, the Cody on the carport, so they, uh, are they fastened down? Uh, why, do they need, why do they need... Uh, so for a building permit, anything that's over 144 square feet or permanently anchored to the ground require a building permit for his proposed carport. I believe that he is anchoring it to the ground and it is okay. over 144 square feet. Okay. Very good. Is there any uh, public comments in regard to this? 
Back to the commission. All those in favor of the motion, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. In a motion to come out of uh, board of adjustment. Move to come out of board of adjustment. Second. second. And a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Brittany. Good morning, commissioners. Brittany Molitor, planning director. The Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine planning and zoning items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and a vote of the Board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Board member or a citizen. The consent agenda for planning and zoning contains the following items. Item C is Minor Plan MPL 2184 for Computer Acres LLC to create Tract 1 of Computer Acres Edition and approval is recommended. Item D is Minor Plan MPL 2185 for County and Detlef Prouch. KTM Design Solutions is the agent. So to subdivide and create lots one and two of Storm Hill Subdivision number two, and approval is recommended. Item E is Minor Plan MPL 2187 for Jeffrey Schur to reconfigure lot lines and create lot D1 revised and lot D2 revised of lot 17 in Fort Meade Placer number 244, and approval is recommended. Item F is Minor Plan MPL 2187 for Randy and Peggy Sogi. Fisk Land Surveying is the agent. To subdivide and create lots 3RA and 3RB of Block 2 of Dead Broke Subdivision. And approval is recommended. Item G is Layout Plan LPL 2183 for Laura Henning and Eric Carlson. KTM Design Solutions is the agent. To combine two lots to create lot 13R in Block A of Idlewise Mountain Development. And approval is recommended. Item H is Layout Plan LPL 2178 for ELS Properties, LLC, Rich, Rick Schulke, to subdivide and create lots 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D, and 3E of Bendel Creek Mountain Estate Subdivision, and approval is recommended. Item I is Layout Plan LPL 2180 for Gold Run 3, LLC, Gregory Rittenberg, to consolidate two lots to create lot 6 revise of Gold Run Park Subdivision, and approval is recommended. Item J is Layout Plan LPL 2179 for Marjorie Helgeson, Trustee, Davis Engineering, to reconfigure lot lines to create Lot 3 revised of the southeast quarter of the southwest quarter, the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter, also in Section 10. And rec it was recommended to continue to the January 18th, 2022 Board of Commissioners meeting. Item K is Layout Plan LPL 2181 for Travis and Amanda Frank to subdivide and create Lot 1 of Frank Subdivision, and approval is recommended. And finally, Item L is Layout Plan LPL 2182 for No Bad Days Campground, LLC, Rob Livingston, to subdivide and create Lots 1, 2, 3, 4, and Utility Lot of No Bad Days Subdivision, and approval is recommended. Any members of the public wishing to have any of these items removed from the consent calendar? Seeing none, in, back to the commission. Any commissioners wanting to have any of these items removed from the consent? Commission? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Roskinen. I will move to approve the consent agenda with conditions that follow each one of those items. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve uh, the consent calendar. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Following planning and zoning matters in our uncontested hearings are those which the planning department has not yet received or provided comment contesting the item. The documents for each item have been reviewed by the commissioners and decisions during these hearings will be made based on the information provided in the packet and the short presentation. If we receive comment contesting the item, the matter will be addressed in the same manner as a contested hearing. Brittany, move on to the uncontested hearings. Item M is public hearing of rezone RZ2131 for William and Mary Lou Carlson to rezone 1.08 acres from agriculture district to low density residential district. The property is located in Green Valley Estates. It is currently used as residential. There is special flood hazard area on the property and access is off of Green Valley Drive. Staff did recommend approval of rezone RZ2131 and planning commission concurred with the approval of rezone RZ2131. Any members of the public wishing to address this item? Seeing none, back to the commission. Move to approve rezone RZ 2131. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. Further discussion? 
All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Item N. Item N is public hearing of major plan unit development amendment PU 21-17 for Little Guys LLC. Ben Brink is the agent to amend the existing plan unit development to allow a specialty recreational resort and to add 25 rental cabinet cabins and staff housing and dorms to the subject property. The property is located off of Highway 16A. It is zoned plan unit development. It contains the Powder House Lodge and Restaurant and Recreational Area. Uh, this was routed around. There was no items of concern. The board, or excuse me, the staff recommended approval with 25 conditions and the Planning Commission concurred with 25 conditions. Any public comments? Back to the Commission. Move to approve with 25 conditions. Second. I've got a motion and a second for approval uh, for the discussion. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Contested hearings. Uh, Cody Sackham, uh, Environmental Planner. Item O is vacation of Section 9 right of way uh, VS 21 06. It's to vacate 351 feet of Section 9 right of way located along the east lot line between sections 32 and 33 of Township 1N Range 7E. The applicant and landowner is Michael and Catherine Cruz. The agent is DC Scott Surveyors. The location of the property is at 3409 Curry Drive. It is zoned suburban residential district with an existing land user res residential. Access is off Curry Drive and there is no special flood hazard area on the property. Uh, when, when reviewing of uh, vacating a section line. We look at uh, the criteria reviewed. Number one, was the section line prepared and circulated for signatures with the petition? Uh, yes. Uh, were there enough signatures collected? Yes. Uh, number three, uh, are, to are to topographical constraints in the section line right away? Yes. Uh, number four, is there means of access developed in lieu of the section line? Yes. Number five, number five, is there access to United States Forest Service lands from the portion of Section Line right away? No. And is there legal access to all property properties abutting the Section Line right away? Yes. Uh, currently on the property, there is a single family residence that was built in 1975 with a detached with two detached garages. Uh, this was right around for interdepartment review. Uh, highway department is opposed to vacating the section line. I believe they stated that a, a setback variance would be better suited. Uh, the applicant is requesting to vacate the section line in order to meet the required setback for a proposed house addition. The, uh, this portion of section line uh, is not on the city's major street plan. Uh, staff confirmed that with uh, Kip, the long range planner for the city of Rapid City. Uh, other means of access have been identified with less uh, topographic constraints to the undeveloped properties to the south. All undeveloped properties in the area have means of legal access. Um, staff finds that vacating the section line does not run counter to public interest. As properties in the area have legal access, the section line does not access public lands. Uh, so staff is recommending approval of uh, vacation of section line VS 21-06 with a condition. So the Highway, uh, Joe, are you coming forward? Okay. I was just going to simply say what your objection to it was. But well, I, I mean, there's no reason for the vacation of the section line. Um, I, I think Megan can probably correct me if I'm wrong, but when vacating these section lines, is this actually in the best interest of the public? What best interest of the public is this going to serve, right? There's actually, I was just looking, there's 360 acres to the east that very well could be accessed by this section line. I know there's topographical constraints, but if anybody's driven down Sheraton Lake Road, you can build a road pretty much anywhere. Um, so I would urge you to to think about this before we just go ahead and vacate a section line. That the section lines have been there for hundreds of years. Um, I, I believe a, a setback variance would be better suited here and keep the the public access intact. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Adcock, I move to continue to the next meeting so we have a a little bit better understanding and we get a look at this property based on um, our highway department's recommendation. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Roskin, uh, do I have a second to the motion? I'll second that. Okay, Commissioner Roskin. Uh, Michael uh, called me yesterday and said he was uh, extremely ill and his wife could not get off work to make this meeting. I said normally when uh, 
planning and zone and makes a recommendation of approval, you know, that's the way the commission votes. But uh, obviously, I think we need to discuss this just a little bit more detail. I will point out that section lines have, get vacated uh, quite often. Uh, his, historically, that I'm sure there's a number of vacation lines or section lines that get vacated. I think each one is based on the merits, you know. But if they have been vacated in the past, I'm just saying that it wasn't in the public's best interest, but they still get vacated because if they're not needed for access or utilities, uh, that would be, t to me, a reason that they are no longer uh, needed to serve public interest. Okay, the, uh, the motion on the table is to continue this to the uh, is it January 4, is that our next meeting? Yeah. yeah. Yes. January 4 meeting. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion to indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Cody, will you get with uh, Michael then and let him know that that's been continued? I'll let him know, yep. Item P. Item P is plan unit development overlay PU 21-18 to allow for a plan unit development overlay to allow a recreational resort to include uses such as a swimming pool, golf course, vacation home rentals, an RV site, and a pole barn to include a butcher processing shop on the subject property. The applicants are McCrory Va Vacations LLC. Lisa McCrory is the agent or excuse me, the owner. The agent is Rob Livingston. The property is located at 24010 and 24012 Twin Springs Road. It's currently zoned agriculture district and it's used as residential. Uh, the criteria that we look at uh, for a, over, a PUD overlay district, um, I will just read the findings. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district conform to the uses by right or conditional uses permitted in an agriculture district. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district are of a type and are located to minimize detrimental influence upon surrounding properties. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district meet the standards governing area, density, and off-street parking of an agriculture district. The proposed PUD overlay district is 4.6 acres. The proposed PUD overlay district is owned by Mercury Vacations LLC, a member managed company. Initial member managers are listed as John and Lisa Mercury. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district are not designed to be detrimental or to or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare. And Pennington County Zoning Ordinance Section 510 criteria are also required. So I will go through those. Um, those are the criteria for a conditional use permit. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district should not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the public. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district should not substantially impair or diminish the uses, values, or enjoyment of other property in the neighborhood. The uses of the proposed PUD overlay district should not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding properties. The proposed PUD overlay district contains adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary site improvements. The existing approach will provide ingress and egress to minimize traffic congestion on Twin Springs Road. And the requested uses conform to all applicable regulations in an agriculture district with an approved PUD overlay. And future land use is identified as rural residential, large lot residential, and natural areas as consistent use within this district. This was routed around for interdepartmental review. There was no items or objections received. The current owners, McCrory Vacations, purchased this property in August 2021 with all improvements made by the previous owner and agent, Rob Livingston. Approval of this request will bring the existing and proposed uses of the subject property into compliance with the zoning ordinance. But however, the main residence was built 24 feet from the property line, therefore a setback variance will be required to bring the subject property into full compliance with the zoning ordinance. And staff did recommend approval of this, and so did the Planning Commission with 22 conditions. Mr. Chair. I would approve with 22 conditions. We got a motion. Is there a second? Second, second. for discussion. Um, got a second for discussion. Chairman. Um, butcher processing shop is the only question I have on a resort. Is there any conditional use permit or what do they mean by butcher processing shop? So he just has an area and a locker inside that shop building that he used for his personal use to process game. 
essentially. Okay. So it's already on that property. And as part of the PUD overlay, we include all of the uses because that would typically be a conditional use. Okay. Um, the PUD overlay is a way to have several conditional uses under one umbrella. So it's not a commercial. Oh, it's not a commercial. It's only for personal use. And he used so it just for, for his. His personal use. His, his resort so he can feed people with. He's not going to be like selling meat or doing a butcher shop there. No, the intent okay. of their property is to use it as either a vacation home rental or their own, or the main house as their own property or vacation residence. Yep. Uh, the issue that came into play is that the swimming pool and the golf course would require conditional use permits. So in order to meet all of those requirements and conditional uses, they did the PUD overlay. Um, to have it as a recreational resort that way that if they wanted to live there, they could live there. If they wanted to rent out the property, they could. I just didn't know if they would rent out that barn or whatever for a butcher processing shop. No, that was not the intent. Okay. It was for personal use for game. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, can that, can that be clarified in one of the... We could clarify that. It is in number one, it says non-commercial butcher shop. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, yep. Okay. Commissioner LaCroix. My concern was the, was the same as Ms. Hadcock's with the butcher. <clears throat> My concern was with the byproduct because I know in, we have several locations in town that the byproduct ends up sitting there for days. And, we, and we, I've gotten some concerns on that. So that... That was one of my questions too, but I think you explained what's going on. It's personal use and <clears throat> being vacational and they'll probably take care of. But I think in the future when we have that, we got if we look at butcher block or shops that we need to look at the byproduct of how that what happens to it, how long does it stay outside in the area, just something to consider because uh, it has become a kind of a problem in some areas of the town. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Roscoe, it might have been, could have been identified maybe with a different name that wouldn't have been so misleading, but butcher was the word that uh, was used. Yeah. It's more of a game processing oh. and a cold storage locker. As long as it's not commercial. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Right, thank you. Thank you. Items from the chair and the commission. Deb, let's start with you. Um, I attended the LNI um, red carpet. That was pretty awesome. Uh, Joe Gutierrez, who's with the JSC, um, you want to see uh, the guy that gets excited in sports, and um, they said no knuckle bumping or whatever, and he knew a lot of the the participants that were in there, and it was pretty cool just how excited he was and how he cheered him on and. Um, there was a lot of people there, um, and Pennington County represented well with all of us, and the sheriff's office as well like to thank them. So it's a huge event, and it brings in a lot of economic development for Rapid City. So I thank them for coming to town and, and putting on this event, and that was just one way to start it out. I did see Malcolm Chapman. Um, he was there, and... Um, he represents very well for the city as well, for the Human Relations Commission and, and what he does for all the people in Rapid City. So I appreciated him and his sense of humor with some of the things that he does and just his uh, leadership on what he does for different events and, and makes them happen as well. Um, what else did we have? I think that's probably it. I can put my other stuff under the committee reports. Okay. Commissioner Osconek. Uh, let's see. Well, I attended the uh, Hill City Economic Development Corporation Christmas party, which was uh, a nice event. Uh, because I attended that, I could not make the Central States Fair Christmas party, which I saw some pictures, and it looked like that was a good event. The building committee was my uh, was supposed to to attend the building committee the next day, but Gary and I went up to Deadwood, and I'll let Gary uh, expand on that. Deb and I both attended the Pennington County Housing Redevelopment uh, meeting, and they had a, kind of a Christmas party. It was, <laughs> there was more <laughs> treats there. 
Uh, that's a dentist delight to go to one of those. But uh, we had two guest speakers. We had Barry Tice, and I think maybe Deb can expand on what Barry talked about, what he wanted to bring to the Pennington County Housing and Redevelopment. And then there was another lady, and I don't know what her name was, but they both uh, would like for us to offer our services uh, to a certain extent. And I think Deb is much better versed uh, talking about that than I am. Then I did attend uh, our regular Heart of the Hills Economic Development uh, meeting, and eventually we're going to be sitting down with Jim Nyman and, and trying to help him figure where he wants to go with the uh, former Rushmore Forest Products property. Uh, the MPO meeting, uh, I attended that in person, and uh, we talked about the Rapid City Transit System, and I, I we had a pretty detailed package on where that's going in the future. I gave that to Joan, so if any of the commissioners want to look at that, uh, we do have that here in our commission office. And then they had the election of officers, and it wasn't uh, that, that many people that really qualified, so I am now the vice chair of the MPO. Uh, then Black Hills Council of Local Governments, I volunteered to work on the bylaws, and so we, we spent about three to four hours uh, redoing the bylaws, and those will be, those recommendations will go in front of the board the next, the next, uh, next meeting. And uh, other than Travis and I both came to the little Christmas party that they had here last week and met with uh, different employees and <coughs> did a little celebration. Uh, other than that, that's all I have. Okay, I did attend the uh, South Dakota Association of County Commissioners board meeting in Pierre. Uh, Senator Crabtree uh, from Madison is bringing forward a discretionary formula bill for workforce housing. And so I volunteered to be part of a uh, mm -hmm. subcommittee to work with him to try to bring that bill into conformance with May Work for Counties. Uh, last week, uh, Shannon and I spent about an hour on the telephone with uh, Senator Crabtree and others uh, in regard to the concerns that we have in Pennington County as to how the bill was drafted. And so we'll continue to work on that. It may work better for smaller counties than it's going to for larger counties at this point. Also, uh, as Ron mentioned, uh, we both attended the uh, Lawrence County meeting uh, this was a, um, a, along with our natural resources director, Scott Guffey. This is basically a discussion with local timber interests uh, with the Fort U.S. Forest Service trying to move forward with uh, what was is a reasonable allotment of timber uh, in order to keep our timber industry alive and well. Uh, Randy Dybart, Dybart from Lawrence County has done a, quite a job in getting the two states, South Dakota and Wyoming, on board uh, with this concern. He had a meeting. That, this didn't happen at the meeting that Ron and I were at, but he had a previous meeting with both governors uh, being in attendance at Spearfish or at Deadwood. And so um, <coughs> he's doing a lot of work on that, and I think we need to uh, keep our nose into it uh, as, as deep as we can to get that timber allotment up as high as we possibly can. Also, uh, Senator Duhamel arranged a meeting with the uh, State Secretary of DANR, Hunter Roberts, to talk about the future water resources for Western South Dakota. He, uh, he talked about uh, regionalization at that meeting, uh, meaning no water users, meaning for water users to get together and maximize the use of local resources with the future intent of bringing Missouri River water west to supplement uh, areas that have a need for it. Commissioner LaCroix. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think quite a few of us was at the LNI, and I had a Human Relations Commission meeting right after that with Malcolm and the group upstairs. Uh, Human Relations MOA did give out some prizes for, I best described for the, the hand games as uh, sportsmanship or generosity, those type of things that they were picked out to do. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to be able to help hand out those those uh, recognitions, but uh, 
it was a good turnout and it's it's amazing what LNI is doing for our community and the welcome and uh, uh, the comfort that the people feel when they come to our, our community. Um, the other thing we I attended was, it was me, Gary, and the Holly, the Black Hills area of local governments in Dupree. Um, I have to admit when we go to these things, I know Gary Drop travels all over the country, the state, but I mean, for me to get out and us to travel out in some of those areas, it's always eye-opening because I haven't been out in a lot of these areas. So uh, it was good to see Zeebach County and, and the presentation. There was a good turnout. Uh, I think we had three representatives there. Three legislators. Yeah. Three legislators. So, uh, and they they were uh, bitching. I'll let Gary when he he's better at that as as far as describing what uh, they were talking about some of the tax on ag land and so forth that's coming forward. So um, that's pretty pretty much it for that. Commissioner Lasker, I had a busy couple of weeks. Um, so I'll just kind of run down some of the things, the highlights of it. Uh, I went out to the um, New Underwood Fire Board meeting, got to meet all the guys on the fire board out there in New Underwood. Um, still having uh, consistent conversations with the EPA dealing with the base uh, contaminated water. Um, the uh, the base, uh, Rita Krebs is the point of contact at the base. They're putting it in their newsletter, announcing that we're gonna be doing a county um, meeting for those that are impacted. Uh, more information is to come because we haven't set a date or anything of that nature. We haven't kind of finalized the aspects from all the entities that are going to be involved in that. Um, but they're putting me as the point of contact for anybody who's interested in that water to uh, issue to reach out to me and so I can put their name on a list. And uh, whenever we have a date and all that set up, I can reach back out to those that want to be notified as well as doing some public notifications once we get everything situated in that aspect um, and then the base will also in their uh, water newsletter will also um, put out a newsletter probably a little earlier to uh, announce that meeting once it's all secured i went to uh, the city of box elder for um, a highway meeting dealing with 1416 and radar hill road some of the concerns and some of the uh, information they wanted to pass on and uh, they're working to schedule another meeting, I think, with me, Joe, and I think it's in January, right, Joe? Did you get that email? Well, 1416 Radar Hill. Yep. For the RAISE project. For the RAISE project. So we're going to be meeting and, and getting some more detailed information on that and what the need is and the impact in the area. Uh, but it was kind of a preliminary meeting for me. Uh, I was part of the Central States Fair Building Committee. They, if y'all didn't know, they applied for vision funds. Out of the vision funds, so far they've been they've been approved. They applied for a million dollars worth. They got uh, approval for nine hundred eighty thousand. Uh, at least that's what's moving forward with that. It's not a hundred percent just yet, but they're ranked pretty high for that particular piece. They pulled twenty thousand out for the um, for asphalt. Um, but the interesting thing that they passed on with this as well for their capital project improvement stuff is barn four. If we would have um, Use an outside contractor, it would have cost about sixty to eighty thousand dollars. They did all the work in house, and it was about fifteen thousand dollars. So showing how they're utilizing the funds they're getting um, appropriately and saving the county money. Uh, one thing to note: the air show is coming uh, May fourteenth and fifteenth. So just everyone can be aware of that uh, from the base. And then let's see what else did I had. I did a couple of site visits due to individuals asking me to come out and look at some things out in Scenic, out in Wall, uh, Radar Hill Road, and uh, some of those lots that are impacted with no water out there. Um, and I'll be meeting with a developer concerning those lots, uh, I think next um, after the holidays. So I'll have more information on that as well. Other than that, all the other extra stuff that we went to, the uh, uh, you know, the employee Christmas house here, the uh, Central States for a Christmas party and things of that nature. Yeah. Any other reports from him? Um, just, so, oh yeah, I guess I should go into the yep. the uh, library report. So I did do, uh, I was at the library meeting and if I remember, there is, the only thing of note from that was that they received a grant for their, for their book mobile, their, their mobile book grant, that book mobile. And uh, so they're working through the process for that. I was at the Elevate annual meeting. Uh, probably the biggest thing to point, and Gary was there as well, but the, I, I think the interesting thing out of that, with all the stats and all the individual, I had a good conversation with Garth uh, about 
planning and zoning and things moving forward. But uh, the amount of um, capital investment in our area just for the last year was three hundred and sixty four million dollars. So that's that's pretty, pretty. Uh, good numbers for our area. It explains why we're growing. And then I did not make it to the community health center meeting. I had to call Lloyd and let him know because I had a conflict that evening. Tonight. Oh, oh, it's tonight. They did. Okay, never mind. Then I guess I'll be at it tonight because they rescheduled. Yeah. <laughs> See, I knew you were keeping me on track on that. Is that it? That's it. Commissioner LaCroix. Um, I think Kenny's got a good update on the healthcare trust board. Don't think, you know, we had presentations from NAFLAC crew and on whole life insurance that they were talking about. I think one of the highlights uh, that KJ made made aware to the group there that the commission does uh, have a twenty thousand dollar life insurance policy. The commissioners do in a spousal of I think five. Just wanted to point that out. Um, and they're working on uh, looking at some joining the state and so forth. So we'll know more about that later on. Um, the air quality board, I don't know what happened with that. I looked at my phone and I was going to zoom in and I had no information for it. And I tried to look up the minutes for it and I don't know if they actually had the air quality board in December or not. There's no minutes as of yet. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, so right in there. Uh, and the community health center board meeting, that's tonight. That was supposed to be last week, and they moved it to this week. And uh, I don't think I left anything out, but it, but I, Travis did bring up the Central State Square board uh, Christmas party. I think we all attended that, and that was uh, a good welcome and, and good, good show up there, too. So with that, I'll pass. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to pick up on the Central States Fair uh, meeting that those vision fund dollars would primarily be used for that uh, remodeling of the Seoul building out there, which would be great. Um, Ron mentioned the regular MPO uh, meeting. Uh, one of the things they are trying to do there is the state is uh, working on a plan to try to keep the Driving lanes open on Highway 385 when they do that construction in the course of the next couple of years, which I think is good, very good news. And then uh, I think Lloyd basically said everything about the Black Hills uh, County District meeting. Uh, we did have 26 individuals uh, from seven counties in attendance. Uh, one of the things that they are pushing is uh, it's actually uh, – called House Bill 50, which is on the uh, grazing and crop lands. Uh, and I missed this, Holly pointed it out to me, that uh, it was stated that Pennington County is in support of that piece of legislation, which we have not taken any action on uh, in support of it. In fact, we have some concerns with the legislation as it's written. Uh, again, that's a uh, point that we've worked with with uh, Department of Equalization with Shannon on that. So, Commissioner Roskinek. Well, I guess I already, out of my out of turn, touched base on a couple of my meetings, but the Pennington County Housing Redevelopment meeting, I'll let Deb expand on the uh, request from Barry, and uh, she probably knows more about the other lady that was there that uh, asked him to work with our organization in the future. And... Uh, Gary pretty much expanded on the uh, MPO, so I'll pass it on the Deb. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Uh, the Fire Service Board, uh, we had a Christmas party for the members, and that was pretty fun. I got some prizes for them, and we gave them some treats. Um, it was a, it was good. Um, it brings camaraderie, I think, that way, in a sense that um, we do remember them at Christmas as a board. It wasn't about me. It was about our board there. Um, showing that we care and they are making a difference. Um, Nick Carlson retired from the city. I don't know if anybody knew that, but he had retired. Um, that was his last day, I think, if I'm correct. So um, he's been a, a, a good leader for our community in the city and uh, always attended our fire service boards. He was our representative, so he did a great job. Um, let's see. Planning Commission. Uh, 
That uh, went well. You have some really good planning commissioners. Um, they think things through. They ask a lot of questions, and I enjoyed that. And you see our results today. Um, building committee wasn't there. Went to a dentist appointment. Or no, that was my doctor's appointment in the morning and dentist in the afternoon. Um, when you schedule with a dentist or a doctor, you really don't have much choice anymore because they put you out about three months. So miss the <laughs> weed and pest resource uh, meeting and uh, the building committee that day, and I apologize. The Pennington County Housing Redevelopment, our board decided to have a Christmas party for the employees to bring, again, some camaraderie. Um, yeah, and I brought a bunch of sugar. <laughs> So on behalf of our commission, um, Brian Ockbach, again, is amazing um, at what he does for us. And it was, he's, he's, I like him because he's emotional in the sense that he got a little teared up about the people he's helping and the things he's doing. And I appreciate a guy that's straight up like that because he's just nice. I mean, he's, he's just a good guy. He did make a little joke about when um, he did his interviews and what uh, he had told me when he interviewed and why Deb had a little skepticism about him being being the, the guy in charge. And we all had a good laugh on that. And um, we um, and I thank Fred for bringing him forward and, and moving him forward. And Ron um, is a part of this commission, I think, what we did as this commission is move that with Brian Ockbach and with these commissioners further than we ever could. And with the help of this commission, um, in every way, uh, a couple of people were ask, are telling me about it, that that in one year has done more than the last 20, 20 years. And it's because of you guys. And it's because of a good leader. He, he is amazing. So I can't say, I keep saying, I can't say enough about a guy that's technical plus has a great heart. And uh, his employees just love him. They didn't leave him and they trusted him in order to move forward in what they were going to do. And, and Ron can vouch for that. He has moved them uh, with job descriptions and different things that he has done um, to make that um, even more amazing for his employees, which I appreciate when someone doesn't think about just them, they think about all of their employees. So I thought that was just a, a cool meet, meet and greet for the employees. Barry and Alex Purcell, which I can never always think of Alex's name, so I forgot his last name. They came on for the rebound program to see if we could make some exceptions and, and help people that way. And we had put that on our PH or some PHS or something, right, Ron? And then a lady also with human trafficking came up and did her presentation as well. So it was very informational at the meeting. Um, did I miss anything? Oh. oh, we did give Brian a review. Yes, you want to tell about the review first? Well, we did a review, and, and so the review, I mean, well, I was the first one to speak, and I said, well, between a 1 and a 10, I, you know, I didn't want to go to a 10 because then you don't have nowhere to go if you're a 10. So I said 8 and a half. Well, that was the benchmark that was set, and as it went around the table, uh, he was all the way into the 9s. And, but uh, so I felt bad, you know, 8 and a half. Maybe I should have been a little <laughs> bit higher. But we did uh, do an executive session. We determined that uh, we were going to increase the salary, and I think we – uh, you know, the parameters could have been three. He said, you know, he said, hypothetically, you don't want to go above seven. I just, and uh, I've been involved in a few other situations where we had to pick a percentage. And uh, so we were very comfortable where we, I think we selected 6% increase and uh, he deserves every penny of that. The funny thing about it is when I started going to these meetings, I wasn't a commissioner. I was just going there because I was upset the way some of these folks were being treated on the Hampton Court. And Fred Eisenbrown probably wasn't uh, very, didn't think much of me. Well, at the last meeting, he comes out and shakes my hand. He says, thank you for what you guys have done to this commission. He says, it's really, it's just so eye-opening. And he says, I'm glad to be part of it again. So the, when you hear something like that coming from a, uh, Fred's been in this business for a long time. Uh, that was kind of a feather in our hat saying, yeah, we're doing something right. Thank you, Ron. That's a, uh, he said it in a nutshell. And like I said, it's, if we can help more people, that's why we're there and we can make it so um, more people, veterans, elderly, and disabled are able to get in the community and function through this housing programs even better than they already do. 
Uh, that's our end goal. So uh, the other thing I forgot to say is I did go to the Central States Board, uh, Fair Board meeting, but I, or not Fair Board, their party. That was pretty awesome. They always treat this commission and their employees very well, which I appreciate about Ron Jeffries. And then was called by John, and they were still having the Vision Fund meetings at City Council. So I went to City Council and supported our fair, um, Central States Fair, and then afterwards did a little bit of lobbying for us and why that's important and how much economically that that uh, fair contributes to our city. So um, I don't know how that's going to go at this point, but anything that we can do as commissioners um, for supporting the, the fair, we have done above and beyond, I think, just by showing them how much they make a difference through our levies. But even this, that the city, um, the first time, thought we were pretty important. Let's see if we can do it again. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I need a, a motion to on vouchers. I need the first motion to be approved voucher in the amount of $240 for the Rose Inn LLC. Uh, Commissioner Hadcock will be abstaining from this. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor of the uh, motion, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, four to uh, zero with, with Commissioner Adcock abstaining. Second motion, move to approve the remaining vouchers in the amount of $4,772,226.54. Uh, move for approval. Second. I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, next item, John. Thank you for hanging around. You bet. Good morning, commissioners. John Morrill, Pennington County Human Resources. So I've got a few motions I'd like to present um, for consideration and approval. Um, the first is from the sheriff's office to acknowledge an error that occurred December 27th, 2020 and move Andrew Nyblom to uh, grade B24 mm -hmm. step four at 2458 per hour as of November 28th, 2021 and retro pay him in the amount of $379 and seven cents. So moved. I've got a motion. Is there a second, second? and a second for the discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, commissioners. The next one I have is to approve the additional hiring discretion for paramedic Brandon Matson, effective December 12th, 2021, and place him at grade B24, step seven, for an hourly rate of $26.36 an hour. So move. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And then the third one I have is this. A motion is requested to approve vouchers and payments to Rhodes Outpatient Treatment Program, Inc. in the amount of $1,475. Moved. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Second. I need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> one thing, if we could. Okay. Um, Let's thank the staff and employees and make sure they have a Merry Christmas. Hopefully they have a Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year coming up. Uh, I don't think we have another meeting till then. So um, I'd just like to thank them all for all their service they've, all our employees have done. Team Pennington County um, kicked butt. So um, I appreciate everybody that's helped me and helped our community and our board move forward. So Good idea. We do appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved nope. to approve. <laughs> I'll, I'll second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.